Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update give or take on the miniatures I've been painting for the games we cover here on the channel. And as a reminder, as we approach the end of 2024, get your pile of grey shame painted. Do a damage to your pile of grey shame this winter season, that's what I'm trying to preach in this series by doing it more often, not just every two weeks. I think it has been roughly that by the time you see this, but I'm trying to keep to it very strictly and at one point we had one with just a week gap. So I'm trying to get a lot of stuff painted myself. I'm not just saying do it, I'm trying to do it myself. Just cracking through piles of grey shame. Never gonna defeat it, that's fine. Just get stuff painted, why not? Use this winter to, I don't know, create a winter of discontent for your unpainted miniatures. On that note, we have some scenery from Kill Team. We have some miscellaneous scenery for our just like, Spruined rubbish that you put around the battlefield for 40k from an ancient 40k terrain or objective set that I found in a cupboard. We have some Crisis Protocol, we have some Battletech, and we have an entire warband for Warhammer Underworlds in brackets classic. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, let's start with the Kill Team stuff, which is from the Hivestorm box. These are visual representations of some of the universal equipment that any Kill Team can take. Uh, I don't quite remember what these are to be honest, but these are the ladders that you can have and then you can climb them as just you know part of your turn, your movement. So these are undeployed ladders, which I guess you would keep to remind yourself of having them. And then these are the ones you can actually use as a visual representation on the battlefield, um, as opposed to just a token that's like, yes, pretend there's now a ladder there. There is also these, I think they're meant to just be, they're just classed as generic barbed wire. Um, and it feels like they're, yeah, they're roughly the length they should be for the token. So probably just classed as general barbed wire, though it looks a bit more impactful than that. Like it isn't just the barbed wire, it's whatever these are with the aquilas on them. But anyway, I spray painted these silver, I can tell because I can see that on the bottom of them. And then I did a little bit of Nazrak yellow for the Imperial seals, some Skeletal Horde for the skulls, and I used a bronze scorpion for the barbed wire itself, dry brushing of the dry rust by Army Painter and a little bit of uh, Basilicam Grey for the stone on the base as well. A wash of Agrat Sword Shade over everything, give it that grimy war look. For the standout parts on each thing, like that's Ghulam and Flesh for the hand with some blood for the blood god and I think it was just Skeletal Horde for the ripped paper there slash purity seal. So just a little bit of set dressing right there. For the ladders, I just used some, I think that was Iron Jaws Yellow, a little bit of Blood Angels Red, mostly again just spray painted silver, and the dry brush of Dry Rust, an excellent paint if you want something to look rusty. And that was also used on the extended ladders obviously because they have to match because it's those but transformed. So that's two of them done, so universal equipment. These, again, I don't remember what piece of universal equipment, I made a Vox box or something, or communication thing, I don't know, it's it's missized really for what it represents if you were to actually have it on the battlefield because it's way too large compared to a normal human, but in terms of just having a visual representation to remind you of something to play. Uh, again, spray painted silver, flesh terror red for the ammo boxes or petrol boxes or whatever it's sitting on, and a little bit of Militarm green and striking scorpion green for the screens. Dry brush of dry rust, boom, done. Agrat's earth shade wash to make it look mucky, and done. Super simple, easy as that. And again, this is, actually this I think is a fourth edition teleport homer icon for Terminator squads. I found it at, in the bottom of a box while I was looking through various sections of my pile of grey shame. I was like, what is this and what are these that we'll talk about in a second. I'm pretty sure this is an old school teleport homer. I just painted it in silver with a little bit of bronze scorpion and again rust just for a bit of set dressing, you know, just the, the gibble you put around battlefields. So that's what I did it for. And it's just again something to say, hey look, that's part of the, the pile of grey shame done. This is kind of cool though. This was from an objective set, I think, for 40k, oh, what, uh, fifth or sixth edition. It came with like a drop pod. I've, I've showed off some stuff from that same box in this series, but very spaced out. These I totally forgot about. It, it's just an operating table with connected Medicare servitor thing. So again, spray painted silver, um, the dry rust, uh, dry brushing, 
a little bit of blood angels red there blood for the blood god and striking scorpion green and it is nice that they kind of link together i mean you could actually have just glued them together but i do like the little kind of the thematic with the the horrible looking medic over the operating table that has straps on it technically i should have picked out the straps with like a brown or something but you know either way it's a fun a fun bit of set dressing it would really suit like an interior kill team map i feel it has a dark tide vibe actually from the video game because you run into the medicaid or medicare i never remember if it's medicaid or medicare but the medics the med stations and they do they've accurately represented this part of it so it just it reminded me of that so i wanted it to look as grimy as they do in dark tide and i think that's that box oh wait no it's not finally done there's a giant like nuke bomb thing it's a circular thing with a bunch of pipes on it i think it's meant to be orcish in design maybe that's the last part of that ancient box that i've got left to do it's sitting waiting to be spray painted next for crisis protocol we have two sides of the same coin we have angel and we have archangel it is the same person before his wings got torn off after his wings got torn off and apocalypse gave him robotic metallic evil ones and made him the horseman of death i think so fun model but they're very striking like they, they stand out really nice um, very similar to the Vulture model covered recently in terms of the bog standard Angel, but really nice looking. I like that he's soaring upwards, whereas Archangel was kind of just charging forwards, breaking through a bit of stone. That's very thematic of their the hopeless naivete, followed by the, the bitter <laughs> reality, I guess, of the position he found himself in to become a horseman for Apocalypse. So this is just the base coat with the Soul Blight wash over it for the white parts. Blood Angels Red for the red parts with a little bit of that new red wash that uh, Citadel did that I never remember the name of. I think it's something Berserker. For the wings, I opted to use Skeletal Horde but very lightly um, just to create a slight coloration. So I couldn't think of a better way to do it. Maybe could have tried Agros Dunes but I feel like that would be too strong of a color. And it, uh, same for the white parts of the like bill of cloud that he's hovering on. Just to show that he's flying. Super simple model, uh, Gulman Flesh for his skin tone and Iron Jaws Yellow for his hair. Super simple, very impressive looking mini though. Uh, I like how he stands out. Haven't seen him on the table yet in either Ultra Ego, so hopefully correct that soon. For Archangel though, I was torn for how to do the colours. I, I actually kind of ended up, I, I don't think I painted it well because the details are just too hard for me to pick out. But in terms of getting a colour that matched the purple, the, the sort of purple that his evil suit is, I kind of lucked into it because I did the whole thing in Volupis Pink, his whole armour, because I wanted to make sure that the pink parts were a baseline and then I'd try and pick out the other parts with the darker shade afterwards, which is not really how you would normally want to do it, but in terms of just I didn't want to have to try and pick out the thin bits with just pink. So... I did it all in Volupis Pink, and then for the sections that I wanted to look purple, I used Asherman Blue, and the blue mixed with the purple, or rather the pink, created that nice ever so slight purple tint that really really matches up pretty well to his official paint job colour. Not in terms of technique or quality, but in terms of the actual colour, it became really really similar. And I kind of, uh, I, I'm, I was going to say I lucked into it. I mean, I took an educated guess that it would work like that when I did it. And I was right. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm like, hey, I understand something about colour every now and then. For his wings, that is just the same uh, Soul Blight Grey or Grave Ward, whatever it's called, wash. They came out with the new wave of contrast paints. So nothing else done to it at all. I think I did try and then apply Grey Sear to the edges a little bit just to add a little bit of definition. And a little bit of non oil in the really darkest parts for, again, definition. Maybe a little bit too strong there, but at the same time, it is supposed to be like metallic, weird looking. And that goes for the cloud parts of the bit of stone that he's smashing into as well. Speaking of that, the Egyptian looking thing, I did what I did for those apocalypse statues. I used Agros Dunes. Same for the hole there, just to imply like maybe more breaking through. And he's kind of, he's to make him look like he's flying, he's smashing into one, as I say. He's faltered and he's just kind of going straight. It looks like he's about to fly up though, because he is pointing up. He had two head options, one that had his hair down and his mask. I went for the mask version just because that's the one I'm familiar with and I figured that it would be easier. And that is just Frostheart for his Mr. Freeze-esque complexion when he's Archangel. 
And uh, yeah, and Basilica, I'm great for both bases. Forgot to mention that with Storm Vermin Fur on top after a little bit of Agros Earthshade, Agrax rather, in the cracks and creases and such. So, neat miniature. I wish I'd done it neater, but I don't have a steady enough hand to do that. Like all the little lines and stuff that should be pure pink, they're a little mixed and a little not clean. Just that's beyond my skill level. But in terms of matching up the colors, I'm quite happy with how that turned out. In terms of overall quality though, I, th I feel like I did better with Angel. So we have a couple of mechs to talk about. We have a stalker that I just I didn't know what I wanted to do with because I just had it sitting and I've already painted a stalker like my mercenary band. So I painted it like House Karita and I don't really have much to say about that other than hey, it's another bit of damage to that pile of grey shame. It has been dealt damage by finishing the stalker that is refusing to fully focus unless I'm side on. It's because he's too thin, like there's not enough of him there. I think that might be in focus. Talked about how I paint the House Creator stuff in previous episodes of the series, so by all means go back and check that if you want, but in case you're just curious how I applied it to a stalker specifically in terms of what mech, there you have it. Didn't do anything different. It's done. What I did do different is I had yet another longbow. <laughs> I painted a longbow like my mercenary band. I painted a longbow that was uh, actually a factory defect, like House Korea. I had a third longbow because a friend gifted me the same box that had like the longbow, the trebuchet, and um, whatever else in it, maybe the stalker as well. And I was like, well, I don't really want to do it like any of the existing things I've tried for Battletech, so give me something new to test. And I tested this, and it's House. Oh, I've forgotten what it's called. It's House something. Ooh, like Lycan something, Lycan Commonwealth. I'm gonna have to check. It'll bother me if I don't check. I was close, it was the Learn Commonwealth. So for this, I used Asherman Blue again. So this is what that blue looks like without being on top of the pink, if you're curious. And obviously just segmented. This is just the base coat gray sear with that same Apothecary uh, Soul Blight wash over the top to give it a little bit of definition. Added some Lead Belcher Silver. Um, I used a tiny bit of Biotang Green for inside the launchers and then picked them out with Iron Jaws Yellow and uh, that's Mantis Warrior Green for the medium lasers and Griffhound Orange for the cockpit visor although you can't really see because it's tiny on a longbow. But yeah, very fun, fun uh, style. One of those ones where I think if you look at it up closer in too bright a light so that the streaks of the contrast are, are apparent it doesn't look very nice but from quite far away, it actually turned out pretty decent. Fun paint style as well. I'm obviously fond of blue paint schemes in general, which is why my mercenary band is two shades of blue with a little bit of white on it. So definitely nice. This is more stylized, I think, with the, you know, like one quarter of it being the white, but it stands out. So if I have any other spares going forwards, I'll probably start painting them like this as well, just to have at least a lance done in the Lyran Commonwealth. Lyran? Whatever. I like your paint style. I can't say your name, but either way, turned out pretty neat. So yeah. And my third ever longbow painted, a mech that I don't even like. But you know, that's probably the last longbow I'll paint. I, I vow to hope to never paint another again. And last, this time we have the entire warband for Warhammer Underworlds, Hexbane's Hunters. They have been in one video by the time you've seen this, because it's already recorded and rendered. Um, I don't think I'll have been in another one by the time you hear this though because uh, Underworlds is just going to be ever so often on the channel now with it being a new, worse version that I have no interest in. I'll just be playing the classic version. But this is an old warband available for the game I picked up. Two doggles. This is Black Legion for this one or whichever one it was I used for the Panther on Black Panther's base in a previous video, either the last one or the one before. I've done so many now <laughs> in the last two months that I've forgotten. but. Hopefully in focus more or less and a little bit of lead belcher silver for the collar. For this one this is Agros Dunes with a tiny watered down bit of snake bite leather for the muzzle. Actually no not the snake bite leather sorry rattling grime for the muzzle. Didn't quite colour it enough. I feel like I should have done another coat. But it was just to make his mutt look a little bit different like the uh, official paint job. Some Lead Belcher Silver, and again for, for the collars. His straps and things on his harness he's wearing is Black Legion, or Black Templar. Again, one of them is really thick black, that's the one I'm used there. One of them is the usual black that thins down, that's the one I used for their harness. And then we have an assortment of Hexbane and his hunters, I don't know, remember their names. 
this is quiet puck i think and then that is a bridget and then this is called he's called amos i think or Irinos, something like that anyway mostly silver for this big guy so i painted him first some basilicanum gray for his trousers military arm green for his shirt snake bite leather for the various bits of leather armor showing through and I use Rattling Grime on all the stakes, and this carries across all the models. They're witch hunters and vampire hunters, so they have stakes and cleavers and such. Lead Belcher Silver for all of that. And just some non oil over the top. I've noticed some silver that I needed to go over with snake bite leather there. I'm going to have to fix that after this, but that's okay. I'll try and remember. So, simple enough. And for all the bases, it's all just Basilicanum Grey and occasionally Rattling Grime if there's any dirt with some blood for the blood god if there's a little bit of gore as a treat just a little bit much the same colors for quiet pock here just silver um the lead belt for silver snake by leather a little bit of mantis warrior green aka hulk green for the slime puddle he's kind of standing in. it has a skull in it as well that's skeletal horde and yeah that, that's about it for him he's a fun model the two doggos are his if you aren't aware of the lore of this group Bridget, I think she probably turned out the worst of the bunch, sadly. Just didn't do that great with her. I used Flesh Terror Red, which is that? Yeah, that's Flesh Terror Red. For her jacket, Space Wolves Grey for her jeans, slash trousers, Snake Bite Leather, all the other colours I've talked about already for the rest of her. She's got that Princess Leia haircut. Agros Dunes for her gloves, and Non Oil as the, the wash of choice. Yeah, not much to say, just I feel like she didn't turn out as good as the other ones. I tried ambitious things with, what's it, I've forgotten his first name, but this is Hexbane. It, Haskell, Haskell Hexbane, that's the one. I tried some ambitious stuff with him because I wanted to do some fancy lighting. He is holding a torch right next to himself. So once again, I took a little adventure in trying to do dynamic kind of lighting effect. I think it turned out okay. Not, not as good as the Thor I talked about last time. That's definitely the highest point in my miniature painting I've hit for a long time and it'll be a while before I hit it again, I feel. But still pretty neat. It, you can tell the effect that's been attempted, if nothing else. A lot of uh, Black Legion for him, and Sigur Burgundy for his trousers. The, that's it, really, other than the colours I've mentioned already. Rattling Grime for the stakes, Snake Bite Leather for the gloves, the straps, etc. And for the flame effect, it is a mixture of Yandin Yellow, Iron Jaws Yellow, Magma Drop Flame, and the really bright yellow for contrast paint that I can't remember the name of. Oh, Imperial Fist, Imperial Fist gel, that's the one. So a mixture of all those. I wish I'd mixed in some orange while this was still damp on the base. Just having the yellow I don't think is a good enough effect. Just a tiny bit of orange I think would have made a difference, but that's okay. He still turned out okay in terms of overall. I think it's between him and the big guy in terms of the ones I'm happiest with out of that warband. I don't know who will be painting next for Underworlds. As I say, Underworlds, I mean, it was never popular on the channel. It's now a more horrible new version, cheap version in 2024, which probably means it's about to be kicked out the door by Games Workshop and cancelled entirely because it's not going to sell well. And that's a shame because this version of Underworlds, the version that existed, was one of my favourite games. It was so good. If you've never given it a chance, go watch the videos. I'm going to carry on playing that classic version. I'm going to call it classic. And yeah, give it a try if you haven't. And you can still pick up older warbands. Uh, the only saving grace for the new version is you technically don't need their unique rules, so you could just try and find models. But either way. And so that is going to do it for another painting update. If you have been taking the challenge of doing damage to your pile of grey shame, as I've been requesting you to for this winter season, and want to show me what you've been painting, feel free to do so on Blue Sky. I am on Blue Sky. It's linked in the description box below. Go to Blue Sky if you want your miniatures to be seen by people who don't follow you. Use hashtags and you actually get your models seen. And I'm not just trying, I'm not a shareholder on Blue Sky or anything, it's just I've been posting there more often now since Twitter is, you know, gone. So, yeah, as, as long as you remember to use relevant hashtags for the game you're playing, or like Marvel Crisis Protocol, Battletech, model painting, miniature painting, I mean, people who don't follow you will find you. I know it's amazing, it's an amazing thing. But when you're not being suppressed by an algorithm that prioritizes horrible, horrible blue checks, it it makes your pictures get seen. So if you want your models to be seen by other people, not even just me, Blue Sky is where to do it currently, in my opinion. You can also just be a member of the Discord and drop in pictures of anything you painted, that's fine too. If you need a link to the Discord, just let me know when I'm streaming and me or a model will let you in for free, it's fine. 
Either way, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has encouraged you to get through your pile of grey shame. My goal is to get two more of these out at least, two more at least, before the end of the year. Let's see if we can do it. Thank you for watching. I'm not going to even hint at what's going to be in the next one. You'll just have to wait and see. Until then, ta-ta for now.